Hey guys, I am using this video time to show you um, and teach you about an annotated bibliography. Um, so what I've pulled up on my screen here is an example annotated bibliography. Any annotated bib at all, um, depending on your instructor's assignments, like if you have to do an annotated bib in another class, your instructor might have things that vary slightly. It really just depends on what they are looking for. But scholars who are not assigned to do an annotated bibliography, but who choose to do them anyway, the reason they do that is because they are finding a lot of information, a lot of sources. And if you've ever had that experience where you have like eight tabs open in your browser or um, old school, maybe you have like eight books laying open on your bed and you're thinking, you know, I read this really helpful piece of information and it was on this subject. And I remember that they um, talked about you know X, Y, and Z. Um, I don't remember what source that was. Now I have to go back through, spend a ton of time figuring out um, which source it was so that I can quote it in my paper. Well, the purpose of an annotated bib is to avoid all of that extra legwork and having to go back and figure out what did I read? Where did I read that? Um, how how did I find that? I don't even know. Um, an annotated bibliography collects information. So every source that you look at, every source that you read, you would, if you were a scholar who was not assigned an annotated bib, you would read through a source and write an uh, entry on your annotated bibliography for that source. Whether you intended to use that source in your paper or not, you would add it to your annotated bib so that if you're researching a month from now or a year from now, you find a source you don't have to reread it and realize halfway through, oh, I already read this, and I realized I didn't want to read it anymore. Um, the annotated bib is a place to collect your research, again, whether you're including it or not, and it's to save you time in the long run and to make your life so much less stressful. Um, the purpose of our annotated bibliography is to show you the concept, but I expect that most of you aren't going to put every source you find. You're really just going to like find the sources for the annotated bib, and that is okay. But I want you to know the theory behind it, because it's, it's really just like a collection of where you keep your sources. It's something that scholars could look through to understand the research they've done, the research they might still need to do, and to avoid doing double research or repeats, things like that. Okay, so that's an annotated bib. That's the purpose of it. Um, it usually will summarize the source and, um, you know, identify the type of source that it is. Sometimes when it was published, although that information will be in the citation, and then whether or not the scholar intends to use any information from the source, and if so, what it is, and if not, why not. <clears throat> um, the example I'm looking at here is formatted in MLA, and I want to show you similarities and differences between maybe like an essay formatted in MLA versus an annotated bibliography. So some of the similarities are the header features. You will notice that an annotated bib still has last name and page number. It still has your student class date information here. Um, in my impression it's just titled annotated bibliography but it could be titled you know annotated bib and then the title of your working title for your final paper um, everything below the title however that stuff is all the same but the stuff below um, is different because instead of writing an introduction writing body paragraphs and then having a work cited page at the end an annotated bibliography is essentially a work cited page but with a paragraph below each citation. So I'm gonna kind of just run through here what you see on my screen and point that out to you. So the first line right below the title of my annotated bib is, an, is a citation written in MLA format for the television show Heart of Dixie. And then there's a paragraph. And after that paragraph is another citation for, uh, it looks like a medical book, uh, maybe a textbook, for ethical patient care written by um, someone named maybe, Matthew, I don't know. And then there's a paragraph. And then there's another citation and a paragraph. 
another citation and a paragraph, a citation and a paragraph, and a final citation and a final paragraph. Um, so again, imagine if you took a works cited page and you broadened it out and in between each citation you put a paragraph. That is an annotated bibliography. Some of the questions that I get when my students are writing these um, especially is after I do my annotated bib, do I have to have a works cited page? No, you'll notice the final content on this annotated bib is that paragraph. There's no works cited page because you already have the citations for each one of the sources you're looking at. They precede the paragraph where you address the summary and how you're going to use it in your paper. Um, so that is the structure of an annotated bibliography and that's how it differs from something else that you've probably written unless you're familiar with this. That's an annotated bib. I'm happy to answer any emails that you have, any questions that you have. Um, please don't hesitate to ask questions because if this is your first time engaging with or being introduced to an annotated bib, it can get confusing. Goodbye. Email me if you have questions.